Here. Trustee Here. Trustee Here. Trustee Schultz. Here. Trustee Oppenheim. Here. Trustee Takaoka. Here. Trustee Brown. Okay, we have a quorum. Would everybody stand for a pledge? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, is there any citizens that want to address the board today? That'd be you. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, we got one item on the agenda, and it is approval and passage of ordinance 2020-025, an ordinance amending the Vernon Hills Village Code with regard to the village president's authority to declare a state of emergency, emergency pursuant to 65 uh, Illinois CS 511-16. So do we go ahead, Chief? I'll just uh, just give a background again, just, just for the folks at home. Chief, Chief, old Chief, old Chief, sorry, <laughs> old Chief. <laughs> People make that mistake occasionally, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this this proposed ordinance would allow the village president or his designee to declare a state of the emergency in the village of Vernon Hills for a specific time period. Um, as was discussed at Monday's village board meeting, this would allow the village to make certain steps to assure the safety and welfare of the community. These steps could include suspending the enforcement of certain traffic ordinances, setting aside certain provisions in, in uh, uh, employee collective bargaining agreements, or any other measures deemed necessary to preserve the peace and assure the safety and welfare of our residents. And if you recall, there were two, there were two issues that were raised on uh, Monday evening. One was the duration of the ordinance, uh, the, the declaration, I'm sorry. The ordinance specifies that if the emergency has been resolved, the, the village president must make a declaration to that effect in writing. If the emergency has not been resolved by the next regular village board meeting, then the declaration will remain in force unless a majority of the quorum present vote to end uh, the declaration. Excellent. Flood notice. Also, the other issue that was addressed was the line of succession right. um, and what would happen if the village president wasn't able to perform the duties and responsibilities. In 2008, the village adopted an emergency operations plan uh, through ordinance number 2008-033. That emergency operations plan includes a line of succession for the village government in such an emergency. A copy of that uh, succession plan was attached to the document for your review, and, and essentially it goes from the village president to the most senior trustee, then it goes to the village manager, the assistant village manager, and then the police chief. You want to add names to that? Well, for, for the record. For the record, it, it, we pulled the names out of the ordinance just because that changed right, from right, time to time. But obviously it would be Tom Cook today. would be the, yeah, Tom Cook would be the uh, senior, senior trustee myself, Mark Fleischauer, to be the village manager, John Petrillo being the assistant village manager, and Pat Kreese being the police chief. Uh, if everyone is good with this, then we would ask for a motion to approve this ordinance. So made. Second. second. Motion and a second. Roll call. Yeah, as soon as I find my roll call sheet. Trustee Cook. Aye. Trustee Marquardt. Aye. Trustee Schultz. Aye. Trustee Oppenheim. Aye. Trustee Takaoka. Aye. President Byrne. Aye. Motion carries. Okay. There's no other business to come before the board today? I, I guess the only thing I'd ask is does the chief or does the other chief wish to make any comments or statements at this time? Uh, certainly, I, I would be happy to report to the uh, board that um, uh, not only as a village staff, but also uh, beyond the village staff, uh, the fire chief and I uh, talk at least once a day. Uh, I'm in uh, constant communication with the surrounding area chiefs, and uh, we are continuing both internally and externally 
on contingency planning for what might be necessary in the days and weeks ahead. Uh, this, of course, is an important step for us um, to have some additional uh, flexibility that we're going to need. Um, and I would just say as a uh, career police officer how uh, uh, proud I am of our community and, and pleased with uh, everyone taking it seriously. Uh, the public is, uh, I think, uh, heeding the warning uh, that has been laid out by um, uh, our, our leaders uh, to stay inside, to limit non-essential tra uh, travel and uh, visits, and they're doing that. I, we, we've really been impressed. Um, our call volume right now continues to be uh, very limited. We hope that continues, and uh, we just want to congratulate the community and ask them to keep up the great work. Do you want to add? Need to get to a microphone that's more than six feet away. <laughs> um, I'd echo Chief Kreese's um, remarks. Uh, we've been working together very closely um, to make sure that we're prepared and we have contingency plans in place. Um, obviously, the most at risk um, members of our community, our retirement homes in town, took this very seriously and were very proactive from the beginning. Um, they've you know, pretty much locked down. Uh, visitors are out. Our call volumes were expected to go up, but we're uh, pretty steady and maybe even down a little bit right now. So I would uh, echo what Chief Cree said. The community's done their part and doing a great job. And uh, we'll continue to work together, not let our guard down, and see how this thing plays out. So thanks, Chief. No problem. Okay. Just back for half and half. Uh, I'm curious for either of you, have you uh, decreased your staffing hours just to make sure that uh, employees will be protected if COVID is found in the, in the station so not everyone's yeah. there at the same time? We, we have, uh, we've made operational changes and uh, staffing changes and in fact more um, to only have what we absolutely need um, in the building and try and keep uh, uh, other folks ready for when we need them. And so we are implementing, in fact, this, this authority is going to give us a little more flexibility to do some of those things we need. We've already done some, but we're going to do more later this afternoon and, and tomorrow. Yeah. Good. Very good. And yes, what, what have we done? You, I'm sorry. Sure. Um, yeah, I guess in terms of Public Works Department, uh, just uh, trying to help out in terms of uh, cleaning the buildings. Uh, uh, I almost called you Chief uh, Fleischauer. Um, village manager has, uh, and I have talked, we're going to add an additional cleaning service uh, to specifically just look at touch points. Uh, wiping things down and try to keep ahead of things. We're working with uh, uh, Metro in terms of their continuing their operations at least through Friday. Uh, stay tuned on that. But we're making sure the Metro stations cleaned also all their different buildings. We're uh, also looking in terms of our operations. Luckily, uh, we don't have snow in the forecast and we're into March. Uh, you know, uh, uh, so we're, we're pleased to announce that. If we were in snow operations, it'd be a lot more difficult. But um, stay tuned, we're gonna have a conversation after this. Uh, Mark's called a staff meeting, and we'll probably have some flex time for our staff too, basically doing the same thing, trying to isolate uh, work groups, because if uh, half of us come down sick, that's different than all of us coming down sick. So um, stay tuned and we'll update you further on that. Sure. All right, thanks. I can't speak white <coughs> that well. Um, I do have, yes, are, yes. are you going to declare an emergency? We, we've given you that authority. Yeah, yeah right? I mean, that's why we're here. <laughs> you know. I, I, yeah. For the record, we are declaring an emergency. Yes. Yes, and that will give us the, the ability to do those things, especially in terms of our collective bargaining agreements. Right. There's some requirements in there that require us to give employees like 120-day notice before we change their schedule. This allows us to 
supersede that and organize our staff appropriately so we can handle things and keep, as, as both chiefs have said, uh, keep our staff as healthy as we can, be able to respond to those emergencies and provide those services we still need to continue to do. Have we adjusted staffing schedules at Village Hall? We only have nine employees. There's not much to adjust. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yes. And our next regularly scheduled meeting is? April 7th. Yeah. Okay. Which is nice. We actually have a three-week break between board meetings to see if, if, if any, of the, uh, any of the actions that we are taking as a community, as a state, are having any impact. In uh, reviewing that email that you sent out regarding what the, what the governor had suggested in terms of Open Meetings Act, it seemed as though we're not required <clears throat> to have public comment, but it's... We are required. Suggested. Trustees it's, can call in. That part is, is, has been waived, but the Attorney General uh, issued an opinion yesterday. Okay. And the second part of the governor's uh, executive order did not eliminate the community input and the community participation aspect of it. So if we were to do a, a telephone call-in board meeting with the board, it would be kind of unusual because the public, we still have to provide the public with a forum in which to be able to respond and ask questions. We're working that out now. And for example, for this meeting here, we put it on the website when we uh, notified the community that this meeting was taking place. If anybody had any comments or questions, they were to email them to us and we would make sure that they were read, heard by the board and answered and or at least addressed by the board. And we would continue to do that until we come up with a different plan. So would we be allowed to do it electronically to, yes. uh, to have public yes. comment electronically if we? That would be the simplest way. Yeah. That would be the simplest way, but that would involve having like two separate conference lines set up, one for the board members and then one for people to call in on. Not impossible. I think I mean, Zoom would allow it. us to do that without having a, a separate line, but you can, sit, you can designate you know, who has the authority to be unmuted, so to speak, and they can chat in questions and unmute that person if there was a question. Okay. So. Yeah. yeah, I have a quick question. So if the governor declared a shelter in place, would we still have a meeting remotely? Or? Um, probably not. Oh, okay. Part of the emergency declaration that was just passed that, right. the, that the mayor is going to sign gives him the authority to sign certain documents without having the oh, entire okay. board do it. So okay. we could still pay bills, we could right. still do payroll, sure. we could, there's certain business aspects of the village that could go on without having to have right. a public meeting. Mm -hmm. okay. And the board would certainly be informed of what was happening ahead of okay. time. As of right now, do we have anything pertinent on the April 7th agenda no, that sir. you're aware of? Okay. So. No, sir, right now it's completely empty. Okay. So except, for the, uh, except for the public hearing for the budget. That's the only thing that's out there. Okay. When, when do we have to have the public hearing by? Uh, for the budget, the budget has to be approved by April 30th. I'm, uh, yeah, May April 1st, 30th. Is, yeah. When it takes effect. Right, it goes into effect May 1st. By, by statute, we have to have it approved by April 30th. Is it possible that that could be delayed? Uh, that would be, be that would be up to the lawmakers. The governors, yeah. Okay. I mean, we've had the budget, the budget's been on the website for uh, over a month. We've had the public presentation. Uh, the public has been invited to submit comments, as they always are, if they have any comments, questions about the budget to staff. Right. And then we usually have um, a public comment section before the next regularly scheduled board meeting, which would be April 7th. Um, I think in the 20 years I've been here, there's never been a single person present to ask a question on the budget. We still want to make that opportunity available to them, and if we do it through email, that would work just as well. Okay. So theori theoretically, if things hunker down, we're not really missing too much uh, the April 7th meeting. We can no, we'll have our warrant list. We'll have a warrant list and a list of bills that we could get the, uh, the mayor okay. to sign off on so we can still continue to make the payments and things. Okay. All right. Any other comments or questions? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? So made. Second. Motion and a second. Roll call. Uh, Aye.
Trustee Cook. Aye. Trustee Marquardt. Aye. Trustee Schultz. Aye. Trustee Oppenheim. Aye. Trustee Takaoka. Aye. Trustee Brown. Motion carries. Thank you and stay safe. Thank you. Yeah. Where's the